This is Diver Wimpy Kid Mind Max. Run in it. Written and illustrated by user Rambunk Stigler over on the r slash loader diaper subreddit. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. I went home as fast as I could. I didn't know that killing was a big part of Fragley's job. Now I'm sure that if I quit, Fragley could hunt me down and kill me. When I got home, I only saw my dad eating dinner alone. He said that Roderick's trashing his friend's house for a while and that Manny was asleep. Mom, Robert, and Linda are still going at it. They kicked him out because his dick was too small, so he got kicked out. He said he was doing some reflecting, starting to regret how everything played out. He also said he's never seen Susan so passionate and happy kissing another man and woman. I felt bad for Dad, but also relieved. If I could convince Dad to help me remove the Jeffersons from my house, we can go back to being a normal family again. And I can erase Riley from my life too. Speaking of him, he sent a message to me out of nowhere that was really cryptic. Hey Greggy, guess where I am? But what he said next was shocking. I was so confused. How and why the hell is Rowley hanging out with Holly? I texted him how and he said he got invited to the sleepover because he told Holly he was gay and would be their guy bestie. Now, not to sound creepy, but I did overhear Holly talk to her friends about a sleepover they were going to do tonight. So I already knew about the sleepover, but I didn't know they would let Rowley come. Rowley told me that I should come to hang out with him, but I could care less about him. All I want is to hang out with Holly. Ever since Rowley tricked me to kissing him, I've been wanting to get a real kiss from her. Now, I know that I hate Rowley, and I want to stay away from him as much as I can, but just think about all the possibilities and opportunities, I can't pass this up. I can just imagine playing spin the bottle landing on Holly. Rowley would be furious. I needed to prepare for my fun night with Holly, so I asked my dad for some perfume. He figured that I was getting ready to meet a girl. He told me that it was about time he gave me his sexiest fragrance. Dad said he used it on his first date with mom, and apparently the same night, Roderick was conceived. Although, I don't know if I believe him, since he gets railed by Robert daily. I put it on anyway and got my dad to drive me to Holly's house. Once I arrived, it was practically heaven. There were so many snacks and board games. Once I got there, Rowley gave me a hug, which I could care less about. What really mattered is that Holly ran to me and also hugged me. I guess she couldn't get enough of my special fragrance. Hi! I was starting to think that this would be the best night ever. That is, until Holly said something that left me flabbergasted. It's so great that I can have two gay boys at my sleepover. How the hell would she come to that conclusion? I realized that Riley must have told her that I'm also gay. Now my chances of hooking up with her are slim to none. But if I tell everyone that I'm not gay, the girls will think I'm some weirdo and kick me out of the sleepover. So I guess I'll have to fake it. The girls all got into a circle and started talking about guys. And Holly asked me for advice. I hate this. Frag, do you think Chirag might be interested in me? The only thing I could do is just lie and say that no guy likes her. If I'm in this situation, might as well take advantage of it. I probably shouldn't have exaggerated and said that no guy likes her because she got really upset. Thankfully, one of Holly's friends suggested we play spin the bottle. Checkmate. Even if I can't get with Holly tonight, I could still get a kiss from her. The only thing I have to worry about is landing on Rowley. If he thinks he can hook up with me tonight, he's dead wrong. I was still kind of scared because there's a really high chance that I would land on Rowley anyway. After playing for a while, I was getting landed on. Truthfully, I think I'd rather not play the game than have a slight chance of kissing Rowley again. Out of nowhere, Holly spun the bottle and it landed on me! I was so excited! Finally things were going my way! Sadly, Rowley had to interrupt it! ME AND GREG ARE DATING! Holly backed away from me and started apologizing for a for nearly kissing someone that was taken. I was in complete shock. Riley just ruined my whole night. I was so embarrassed I grabbed my stuff and ran away. No way I'm gonna stay there after that. Bye bye, Pookie. This time dad couldn't drive me back home, so I had to walk home. When I got there I went straight to bed, but my new family was still making noises upstairs so it kept me awake. I started thinking about what would happen if Riley and her friends gossiped about me and Riley dating. It's obviously not true, but who would believe me? If the rumor gets out, I'd be tormented for the rest of the school year by all my peers. No girl will ever want to date me because they'll think I only like guys. Thinking about it, this torment could go on for the rest of my life. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't have to live in that reality. The only thing I can do is hope that the rumor doesn't spread that Riley doesn't say bad things about me to the girls when I left. The next day, I got really stressed because of school. It could very well be the end of my popularity. I really don't want to go to school, so I tried pulling the classic pretend I'm sick technique on my mom. Sadly, Robert saw right through my life threatening me to tell the truth. Do you want to get smacked? No, sir! Once I got to school, I jolted directly to the bathroom, planning to stay there until the end of school. I don't know if I was going to do this for the rest of the year, but it didn't seem like the worst idea. After an hour or two, I heard a group of guys into the bathroom talking about a new gay couple. Yeah, the girls definitely gossiped to everyone. 
I'm cooked. This was the beginning of the end. Did you hear about Riley's boyfriend? <laughs> yeah, so unexpected. Now that everyone's know, there's no point in trying to be popular or anything. It's all over. I went to the halls ready to get made fun of by everyone, but instead people were circling around and laughing at around two other people. It was Riley and Frankly, they both looked really confused, and people were chanting at them too. Piss you dorks! <laughs> I figured out what had happened. Since Riley told Holly that we were dating, she told all of her friends. But Holly still thought that I was Fregley, so she told her friends that Fregley and Riley are together. For once, I'm happy that Holly doesn't remember my name. Fregley came up to me very upset, saying that when he finds the person who spread this fake rumor, he was gonna kill them. So I can't let him know that I'm involved in this, or he might kill me. I want this MF for dead. He said this rumor could permanently ruin his business. He said he had an idea on someone who would try to ruin his image. One of his many drug rivals. And he gave me a piece of paper that turned out to be a hit note on someone. Holy shit, I can't believe Frankly asked me to do this. Does he really think I can kill a man? Let alone drug? He's like the nicest person in school. Who knew that he also had a drug empire like Frankly? Apparently, they've been business rivals for a while now, fighting for territory and whatnot. So Frankly's convinced that Shrog made this lie up to mess with his reputation, even though it was me. I really don't want to kill Shrog, but I know that if I don't follow Frankly's orders, I will be the one who's getting killed. Frankly told me that I could kill him in any way that I want, but he has to be dead by the day. I had no idea how I was going to kill Shrog. If he was really a mafia boss, then he would be protected by guards at all times. If I really wanted to kill Shrog, then it would be private and quick, so I decided to ask Frankly for a gun with a silencer. I can't believe I'm really doing this to Shrog. I needed to find a way to get Shrog alone with no security or guards. I texted him asking to meet up privately and he accepted. He said he was in the art room alone so I could talk with him. This is going to be a quick one-off thing that I was forced to do out of my will. I will never kill somebody else ever again. Unless I'm an actor in an action movie if I become rich and famous. Alright, here we go. Hey Greg, you wanted to talk- <sighs> Greg, what the hell are you doing? C come on, man. This is crazy. It's my job. I... I, I have to do this. Uh, I'm sorry, Trog. Please don't kill me, man. <laughs> huh? Where did he go? Did you really think I wasn't expecting you to come armed? I'm a mafia boss for Christ's sake! Now, I'll show you who's gonna be invisible now! Oh. Yeah! What are you doing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you got some fight in you, wimp! <laughs> Shit, I need to reload. <laughs> oh. Sorry, Shirog. But you forced me to do this. <laughs> this was fun, Greg. But it ends now! Consider this as revenge. For every time you said I'm small, for every time you called me Invisible Shrog, it's over! Now die! <laughs> what the shit? I felt like throwing up. I watched Rock Soul leave his body while I lay completely still. Who even killed him? Because I didn't put that bullet through his head. That's when I saw Fregley emerge into the classroom. He was the one who finished off Shrog. Nice to see you're alive. My ears were ringing. I just saw a person die. As a matter of fact, I helped. I tried standing up with a sharp pain in my leg. I had completely forgotten that I got shot in the leg. Fregley helped me up. I asked him what we do with the body and said that since Shrog has the gun in his hand, people will think it's suicide. This is definitely the worst week of my life. 